Energy resources. Even for nuclear fuels, one has to be concerned with them. How much uranium is there? And if the world were powered using fission, instead of just 8% of our energy source being fission, would there be enough? Well, first, keep in mind uranium is a naturally occurring element. It's the heaviest naturally occurring element. And it actually is fairly plentiful. It's more plentiful than gold by far, more plentiful than silver, platinum, all of the precious metals. It's really not all that expensive. And if you were desperate and used some passive collection system, seawater is five parts per billion. That's not much, but it exists. Uranium. Here's a chart of where the uranium reserves are in the world. And you notice that Australia down here is the darkest color because it has the most. This other darker area is Kazakhstan, the southern part of the former Soviet Union. And you can see that uh, Russia, Canada, has quite a bit of uranium. Now, this is who actually would have it. Who's actually pulling it out of the ground? You can see Australia is on the list, Canada. Uh, and Kazakhstan, some in Russia. Each of those colors represents a factor of 10. So it's actually very small amounts made in a few other countries as well. The pie chart actually shows you the current supply from 2012. Indeed, the largest pin here is Kazakhstan, Canada, Australia. So this amount of uranium certainly has been sufficient to meet production demands, and mostly because you don't need very much. One ton of the good stuff, uranium-235, is enough to power a nuclear reactor, a large-scale commercial power plant-sized nuclear reactor, for three years. So the gross total amount of uranium that needs to be pulled out is actually relatively small. And the world's supply of the U-235 isotope would probably be in the hundred of years scale. We'll discuss later in this course breeder reactors which use the much more plentiful isotope U-238 which puts us into thousands of years supply. This is a chart of supply and demand. And for quite some time you notice that the world's production has been behind the world's consumption. Yet what's not shown in this graph is the world's stockpile. And the actual prices of uranium have not gone up much. In fact, they've been fairly flat because you have this large stockpile. It's an important resource, but one that does not require very much of it and therefore is easy to store and keep going. So now let's talk about what form it actually occurs in. In almost all places, uranium is in sandstone. So you mine vast quantities of sandstone and you try to extract the uranium ore. And that uranium ore, U308, is known as yellow cake. And that's because it's actually bright yellow. This amount of U308 is actually 0.1 to 0.2 percent. If you have to mine a thousand pounds of the uh, sand, you will only get one to two, two pounds of the ore of the yellow cake. Here's a picture of a uranium mine. This is one that's out in Australia. You can see it looks like a big pit of sand. Let's get a little closer. To separate out the uranium-2308 from the other uh, uranium-containing sands, you'll have some types of pools, and you can separate them chemically. And I think you can probably see here even some yellowish hue, which may indeed be the yellow cake. In this demonstration, you can see that I actually brought U308 into the lab. It's pretty radioactive, certainly a few millirem per hour. It's not something you want to pass around 
because uranium, after all, all right. is radioactive. Well, because you notice it's double, triple, quadruple bag. If you actually got down to the U308 itself, it is a yellow, yellow sandy-like stuff, but it's, it's U308. I mean, it's uranium. It's natural uranium, but uranium, as you can see, is radioactive, and you don't want to eat it, right? Okay, or like rub it into your skin. So, oh, look, pretty yellow makeup. All right, no, no, no not, not a good idea. How do you find these big giant piles of uranium-containing sand? The fact that uranium is radioactive and only really slightly radioactive has a half-life of 4.3 billion years is a good indicator. Another demo here shows some rocks, some pieces of granite, small amounts of uranium. You can see with the Geiger counter just a few clicks. And then you get some other rocks that have, have a bit more uranium. And then finally a bag of some rocks that a friend of mine picked up out west that fairly concentrated in uranium ore. The fact that you can find uranium with a Geiger counter can be very handy when fossil hunting. You don't say fossil hunting. How does something become fossilized? Well, some type of mineral replaces the organic matrix in the bone. What if you're in an area that's rich in uranium? That mineral that replaces the bone will be the uranium, will be the uranium oxide ore. So here you see an actual piece of dinosaur bone. And it indeed is relatively radioactive because what fossilized this bone was uranium itself. Kind of neat that you can find dinosaur fossils with a Geiger counter. Well, let's go back to the uranium mine. You separate out the yellow cake, the U308, from the rest of the material. But even though I get a couple pounds of it, I'm going to have nearly a thousand pounds left of the sand. And this sand is in fairly large piles. Uh, they're called mill tailings. It's what's left over from the mine. Uh, here's another picture of a big sand pile. The thing is that uranium, this part, since it was slightly radioactive, over time, uranium will change into something else and emit the alpha, betas, and gammas. That's what radioactive means. So when it changes into these other things, the things it changes into are still going to be there in the sand. And many of those substances, particularly the radon, are radioactive themselves. So this sand is not good for anything because it has radioactive substances in it, even though you've taken the uranium out. Don't get me wrong, it was the exact same sand that was in the ground before you dug it up, so of course you can put it back and you haven't polluted anything, you haven't changed anything. But there are the cases where people will actually have taken that sand and said, hey, look, a big pile of sand. I need to make concrete blocks. Someone's already dug it all up for me. Let me go use that sand to make my concrete. Mistake. That did happen in one location. The houses had quite a high radioactivity content, huge amounts of radon. Of course, they were found out, torn down, buried, rebuilt with proper cement blocks and the company, I'm sure, out of business for trying to shortcut by taking mill tailings to be able to use as a sand pile. In many cases, to prevent the mill tailings from blowing across the area and bringing radioactive material to places it doesn't belong, they'll either rebury it in the mine, the exact same place they dug it up from, or in some places even, pave over the top of it. That's what you need to know about uranium mining and milling.